welcome you all to The Gateway. The Gateway is a video podcast directed and hosted by staff members of Somerset Community College's student newspaper, The Bridge. This is The Gateway. Hello, SEC, and welcome back to The Gateway. I'm your host, Eli Parker. And I'm Michaela Scott. And I'm Lori Abbott. Look at this, we converted her. <laughs> <laughs> From being interviewed to being the interviewer. And with us today is Mr. Jed Keith. Hi, thank you for having me. And um, thank you very much for coming on. And about Mr. Keith here, when he's not teaching social studies at Pulaski County High School, he's got his hands full of writing. And specifically, we want to start out about Freak Sugar and what exactly that is and how that came to be. Well, first of all, I want to thank you all for uh, having me here. I've never talked about Freak Sugar and on camera, so I do appreciate that. Freak Sugar is a pop culture website. We kind of run the gamut of uh, different coverage as far as like movies, TV, web comics, podcasts, any kind of books, anything that's kind of uh, we think is neat. You know, we don't really have an agenda as far as we want to cover X, Y, or Z. It's we just kind of. You know, if it's something big that everybody wants to talk about, that's fine. And if it's something like a niche, like podcast or anything like that, we want to make sure that we give them the coverage they need. And it's mm. just you know, whatever kind of uh, tickles our fancy. Mm. So do you have any, like, personal stories from uh, your experience with Freak Sugar that you'd like to share? Uh, yeah, uh, I got started with Freak Sugar. Uh, Lemon Juice McGee is, you know, a big public figure here in Somerset. <laughs> Uh, he and I were friends about 15 years ago, and he worked at a comic shop. At the same time, he was editing for the site called MTV Geek. And the editor of MTV Geek, um, he was starting Freak Sugar, and he asked Lemon Juice if he knew anybody who might want to write for the site, and Lemon Juice recommended me. Um, and over the years, I've just you know, chugged along and plugged along, and eventually I became editor-in-chief. Uh, as far as any personal stories I've had over the years, um, I've been extraordinarily blessed as far as who I've gotten to interview, uh, people you may or may not know, uh, some of the bigger names. Um, and one thing, just kind of as a side note, if you are out there and you're wanting to tackle pop culture, pop culture entertainment, what I tell everybody is just ask. How I got most of my interviews is just persistence nagging <laughs> and asking. That kind of leads into one of my favorite interviews I've ever done, uh, the show Community. Ooh, um, that's a yeah. Um, I love Community. And there was, whenever it converted to Yahoo Screen, um, I was living in California at the time. Mm -hmm. And I just looked on web Yahoo's site. I contacted somebody who put me in touch with somebody who put me in touch with somebody. And they said, well, we're having a junket in order to promote Community. And I just kept emailing and emailing. I think they eventually went, okay, we're going to have to shut this guy up. <laughs> <laughs> so I got invited to a press junket, and it was my first physical. Like, I've talked to people, like, in conference calls and interviewed people in conference calls before. And it was my first physical in space <laughs> <laughs> press conference. And uh, I got to talk to the actor who plays Abed and the dean. And uh, what I'd have to say to anybody who's wanting to go into entertainment writing like this it, or any kind of writing at all you may see like some of the cooler interviews that I have on the site but you don't see the 99 no's or no responses mm -hmm. that I get so don't get discouraged um, other interviews I've had I've been blessed to talk to a lot of comic book writers um, the show Sweet Tooth I was able to talk to a few folks from there. That's awesome. Um, occasionally get to talk to some folks from Adult Swim. Ooh. And it, it's all about building relationships. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I've been extraordinarily blessed, but also probably a little persistence gets in nagging and being a pest. That's it. That's journalism right there. Journalism. <laughs> So outside of Freak Sugar and your actual teaching, we understand that you're a freelance writer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I do a little bit of everything, uh, especially locally. I do a lot of um, press releases for different mm -hmm. companies. Uh, I do a lot of standardized test writing, so I like to say I'm part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I do freelance for that. Uh, I also uh, do PR for a couple different companies. One local company, GT Races, a lot of the Lake Cumberland uh, Run Walk series. They do a lot of the timing and help set up 
and uh, I do their PR for them too. Mm. So just basically, whoever reaches out, I will. I never say no, <laughs> <laughs> and that's a problem sometimes. <laughs> I, I never say no. And so, how did you get set on this pathway of not like not just journalism, but just writing in general? Because it seems like that's a lot of your life now. Um, a lot of encouragement in high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was lucky, uh, lucky in middle school and high school to have a lot of teachers who encouraged my writing over and over, and kind of um, knew that I was responsive and receptive to kind of guidance. Um, and just it, it was a hobby at first, and then I found out, oh, I can make money on this. And also, <laughs> <laughs> bills are, you know, bills keep coming. But, <laughs> but in addition, really, in addition to that, if I didn't love writing, I mean, there are all sorts of other side gigs and side mm-hmm. hustles I could be doing. And, I mean, I've been very blessed to have some of these opportunities. Um, I took some classes at SEC, and I was very lucky to have Jeff Harris <laughs> and inter- introduction. Lucky. <laughs> um, I, I just graduated. I just got my BA, uh, not at SEC, but I was one. Of, I'd heard about his class, and mm-hmm. I'd well, I'd heard about Jeff before, and I love love film, and you know, mm-hmm. he kind of uh, helped me to be a little bit more measured and consider and just, instead of just saying, I love this movie, it's awesome, kind of like dig deep <laughs> and, you know, try to figure out what the director and the filmmakers are saying. And that kind of also informed how I approach anything, TV, comic books, uh, any kind of writing. It, mm. It's really helped shape me as far as who I am as a writer. Oh, that's awesome. So, but how'd you get into the social studies teacher gig then? <laughs> social studies teacher gig. Uh, I also just, I love history, I love social studies, anthropology. Uh, my undergrad degree is actually in anthropology and religion. Uh, so it's just kind of like a, you know, perfect storm. I like teaching. I really like seeing whenever some of those kids, some of the ideas click, and whenever I'm actually teaching, I'm like, oh, that works. Because <laughs> a lot of teaching, I'm sure Jeff and anybody at SEC will tell you, is trial and error, but whenever you actually <laughs> hit that, I mean, it's worth it. If you get one kid to understand or be have some kind of spark, I mean, it's it makes your day. Aw. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you had somebody that wanted to get into, like, entertainment and pop culture like journalism Mm -hmm. how could they get their foot in the door to do that not necessarily doing like the interviews with people but like to get a job somewhere to do that Mm -hmm. uh one thing i would say uh kind of on a base level even like take all your writing seriously not just with journalism like if you have a history class or if you're expected to write even a lab report for a science class, I mean, take every piece of writing and every writing opportunity seriously. As far as getting your foot in the door, um, you know, whenever I started out, blogging was not as big a thing. I'm so many years old, but uh, (laughs) uh, it was not such a thing. But now, you know, we have uh, video journalism. I mean, there are so many different avenues like blogging, TikTok, uh, all sorts of different social media. I would say just get your work out there. You need get a web presence as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Um, people who follow me on Facebook know that I excessively share my <laughs> <laughs> articles, and it's not out of some sort of vanity. It's more of please see my work <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it is persistence. It's getting eyes mm-hmm. on your work. And it's not, when you're doing that, it's hard to self-promote. I'm one of the biggest um, uh, enemies of myself whenever it comes to self-promotion. But can't think of it as vanity or bragging. You have to think of it, this is part of my job. And Mm -hmm. if I want to get my work out there and get eyes on my work, that is just something I have to do. Mm -hmm. Essentially PR, pretty much. (laughs) Yeah. uh, (laughs) I was telling somebody actually on my way here because I got a phone call on my way here. Um, I said, you know, I'm, I can do the PR work, but when it comes to myself, I have to remind myself constantly, you're not bragging. <laughs> it's just work. <laughs> it's just work. Um, 
Yeah, and like I said earlier, persistence, 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 mm -hmm. because you are going to get no's all the time. And not just in journalism, but uh, applying to jobs, uh, just life, period. And it is easy, so easy to get weighed down by the no's. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just accept that whenever you're emailing somebody for an interview or trying to get a job, you're not the only one that's applying for that. So you just need to make sure that you take everything with you know it's not a personal attack and just move on to the next episode because you because if you don't i mean nobody else is going to do it for you you can take your couple minutes to sulk and grieve like i really wanted that job or wanted that gig <laughs> and then move on because you have to because nobody's going to say well it's okay jen <laughs> <laughs> So what are some of your favorite aspects of pop culture? Oh, uh, favorite aspects of pop culture. Um, I love, like you would think, I love community. Um, <laughs> I'm a big fan of The Office. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, after season eight and nine. We, uh, yeah. After Michael Scott left. <laughs> is, how, however, I will say that there. the season finale or series finale mm -hmm. oh my gosh. weirdly stuck the landing. Because yeah. as much as you're watching like season eight and nine... You know, like this is this is wretched, but mm -hmm. then you get to the series finale. It's great. Mm -hmm. So good. Um, as far as what I'm watching on television right now, uh, we are rewatching Mindhunter, which kind of goes. In, I'm teaching a sociology class right now, and mm. uh, we started talking about serial killers. So I was oh, like, fun. perfect opportunity to <laughs> re rewatch Mindhunter. Um, I've been pretty impressed with some of the Star Wars shows. Uh, but with that, not so much, but I'm really excited about Obi-Wan. Um, uh, I am also looking forward to Moon Knight. It looks a little different. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Moon Knight, for sure. That's going to be so good. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be really good. Um, Rewatched Into the Spider-Verse because for some reason I oh, wanted yeah. to cry. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I needed a good cry. Um, yeah, and as far as, like, comic books I'm reading, I read a lot of, like, underground because I get a lot of like the mainstream stuff and I love the mainstream stuff, but try to give my eyes and dollars to folks who, you know, may actually need it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, with that said, um, I'm glad you've showed us this limelight into pop culture and just writing and you've had a lot of great advice and notes that were surprisingly brought out. I'm not saying surprisingly coming from you, but just it got deeper than we expected. Well, it, it's surprising coming from me. No, you were right the first time. <laughs> uh, He's humble, too. <laughs> but, no, I do appreciate, like, letting me ramble for a bit. Oh, uh, well, the rambling's not done yet because we also know that you have some affiliation with the local roller derby around here. Oh, I do have some affiliation. I am head ref for Summer City Roller <laughs> Derby. Uh, they have let me stick around for the last four years. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I... Uh, it's kind of another Somerset story. At the mm -hmm. time, I was doing compliance at the bank, which at Citizens National Bank, which I know is far away from Rodney <laughs> <laughs> and teaching. But uh, I had a lot of friends who were on the roller derby team who, you know, were working at the bank, and they said, "Hey, we need a head ref." So it's not like there was a vetting process. I can't <laughs> pretend like you know. But uh, no, they said they needed a head ref, and they offered it to me, and I'm very thankful they did. It's a wonderful group of women uh they have built the team from the gr like ground up and they've become one of the most respected in the state because everybody says that they are excellent players mm -hmm. they have they have good sportsmanship and they i see them you know giving their all every practice and whenever we've had bouts before so they I'm just a very very small part of that mm -hmm. but I'm very grateful that they have folded me into their derby family. <laughs> That's awesome. You got a lot of hats. I do have a lot of hats, and sometimes I feel like I'm, um, you know, a man of many hats. What, what's the phrase? Uh, Jack of all trades. Jack of all, Jack all, of all trades, trades, master of none. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like sometimes I'm master of none, but yeah, it's... Uh, that's another piece of advice. Just try anything. All you can do is fall. <laughs> Especially you, in roller derby. <laughs> I've done a little bit of that, too. <laughs> Those games get brutal, I can imagine. <laughs> they do. They do. Um, yeah, I've broken a bone doing roller derby, and it is the... It, it is the it's not from playing. It is the dumbest... <laughs> this is the dumbest story. Like, you're like, I broke something from roller derby. No, it was like the 
second, third month, I was repping, and I was still trying to get my uh, my baby duck legs being able to skate. <laughs> and I was literally standing. I didn't move. I, I don't know what happened. I just <laughs> fell. <laughs> and I uh, hurt my hand, and I thought, well, it's probably sprained or something. But then it kept feeling like that three days later. And I said, yeah, you broke your hand. I went, cool. <laughs> so if somebody presses me, you know, if I broke something, I'm like, yeah, I broke something. Well, how? <sighs> Why did you have to ask that? I sounded cool there <laughs> for a minute. But, yeah, it's it's really, I mean, I feel like they've gotten a, a very, like, the community has welcomed them, and I, I know that the Derby team is very um, grateful to represent mm-hmm. Somerset. And I think personally, you know, I'm a little biased, but I do think they've done an excellent job with that. Awesome. And speaking of broken bones, you and I talked a smidge about this, but at one point in your life you looked into nursing, but that didn't work out. <laughs> I, it wasn't so much it didn't work out, and you, you might want to edit this. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was just one of those things. It was one of those things that, you know, I kind of explored that a little mm. bit, and I was because I like helping. I feel mm-hmm. like, you know, if I'm not writing, I feel like I'm a helper. That's one reason I teach. Mm. Uh, but it was one of those things where I felt like I was just called more toward teaching again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we're very glad you found your calling both in writing, teaching, roller derby refereeing, <laughs> whatever other whatever occupation you have. <laughs> Freaking octopus wrangler for all we know. <laughs> well, that's going to be in the next interview. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for next time. Yeah. And with that said, we'll be concluding this episode. Thank you very much, Mr. Keith, for joining us for this episode. Well, Mr. Keith's my father. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me here. I really appreciate it because I've been excited to talk about it, and um, I really like what you all are doing. Thank you. For more information on SEC Student Newspaper, The Bridge, or the Gateway Video Podcast, email us at secthebridge at yahoo.com or contact one of the course advisors. This is The Gateway, signing out.